As the CCO, um, we've been around, we, when we applied to be a CCO in 2012, the CCO contract for, for by, through the state of Oregon brought some different elements into our contract to ensure that as a state we would be looking at healthcare differently. So the state implemented into our contracts the, the metrics, the 17 metrics on how we as a health plan would be evaluated and partially paid by the state. They implemented community health improvement plan requirements, which helped us and guided us in the development of our community advisory councils. And they, and they also included in our, in our contracts an, an addendum called the transformation plan. So the transformation plan is an actual contract element that the IHNCCO has with the state of Oregon. The transformation plan calls for the CCO to implement eight elements of transformation. Uh, the eight elements include implementing alternative payment methodologies, integrating mental health and dental health services into the mental health, into physical health and primary care, um, addressing health disparities, um, facilitating health information technology, facilitating the introduction and implementation of traditional health workers, facilitating training and education for the community, Im implementing a quality improvement plan, and the development of the community health improvement plan. So those are the, the eight elements of transformation. As a CCO, we decided um, to go about the develop, changing, transforming healthcare in our region, Lynn Benton and Lincoln counties, through a collective impact model. What that means is that we would come together, we would pull the stakeholders of the community together, and we would all agree on the vision that we were trying to achieve and how we would go about as a community addressing those eight elements of transformation. So in 2012, we invited any provider in Lynn Benton and Lincoln counties who had the ability to affect the health outcomes of our members to start coming to a meeting that, that we call the Delivery Systems Transformation Committee. And this, this committee meets every two weeks and has met every two weeks since 2012 with the standing opener of, you are invited, you can be here, you can participate if you have the ability to affect the health outcomes of any one of our members in Lynn Benton and Lincoln counties. So it's an open meeting available to anybody who meets that criteria. So since 2012, that committee has been working on the collective vision of transforming healthcare through improving quality, improving access, and de decreasing um, the cost of care. We decided to do that through the development um, and support of pilots within our tri-county region to address the eight elements of transformation. So at your tables, you have some information. I'm gonna talk about this one first. So this one. You can see that we have, it says how we find new ways to deliver care and improve health. So this is what the Delivery Systems Transformation Committee does. We have our providers, as I said, any provider who can affect the outcome of uh, the health outcome of a member is invited to come. The health plan provides the operational support and the transformation team is the committee that meets every two weeks. Um, so we come together and we talk about different grant dollars that have come in through the CCO and how those can be used to transform healthcare. We talk about pilot opportunities, meaning are, who, what provider in the community has an idea on a pilot or a concept of how to do care differently that might improve health outcomes. And we have work groups for each element of transformation that help give us feedback on if we're meeting those eight elements of transformation. On the back of this sheet, we list out our work groups which mirror more or less the eight elements of transformation. And then we list some pilots and some grants. So related to our pilots, I, it's, um, this is not the entire list. So we've been doing this from 2012 and we actually have quite a, a, a pipeline of pilots. And we, in the net, so we end our year for this, this transformation committee has two more meetings before the end of the year. 
and we had to extend our meetings to two hours to get through all the pilot proposals that are going to be coming before us in the next two weeks because your community is so engaged in trying to improve your health care and they've got all these fabulous ideas and um, they've, they've learned about this opportunity and are coming forward to get those in front of us so that we can see if they meet the eight elements of transformation and then get them, get them started. So on the back is just a few. Um, I'll let you read through them. If you have particular questions about them, you can write them on the yellow card and we're gonna be highlighting one in a video here in a minute. But I did want to talk about how the pilot process works. For if, so if any of you are interested or you know of people who are interested in developing a pilot. So um, we have a pilot packet that we send to people if they're interested in proposing a pilot. The Delivery Systems Transformation Committee worked with the Oregon Health Authority who provided some technical assistance to us on developing a proposal process that would be equitable and fair for everybody who was interested. So this, um, this process is in included in the pilot packet that we send out to those that are interested. There are some criteria that pilots have to meet to make it through a kind of a, just a, um, a phase where they fill out the packet and if they've met the criteria, then it gets to go on to be proposed to the committee. But you have to meet the, the basic criteria of, the, of a pilot, most of which is really about those eight elements of transformation. Uh, the, pa the packet has uh, instructions, a budget template, uh, an outcome template, because part of transforming care is ensuring that we are meeting our goals. So part of the pilot, part of a requirement of these pilots is that they have outcomes that they are trying to reach and that can be measured. And then there's a scorecard that the transformation team scores each pilot against to help us, to help guide us in our decision making. So draft proposals are sent to a quality analyst that we have within the CCO, and she works with the um, pilot proposers to make sure that they've understood the proposal requirements and works with them to develop, sometimes she helps with them to develop their budgets or to develop, um, uh, to help guide them in, um, in how, what the most successful pilots have had and the language that they've used. Um, so that when they get to the Delivery Systems Transformation Committee that um, they fly through really fast and they get approved. And that actually happens more often than not. We approve most everything that comes before us because it's met all those criteria pieces by the time it gets before the committee. Um, the, uh, once it goes through that process, then it's proposed to the Delivery, Trans Delivery Systems Transformation Committee. We um, usually have a conversation about it as a committee. Like I said, we, we rarely deny them, but we often send them back. And we usually send them back because they're not clear on an element of transformation. Maybe they're not clear on how it integrates dental with, men, with, with, the medical, with dental health with medical health. Or maybe it's not clear on the alternative payment methodology that's being implemented. Or maybe how it's going to be sustained after the pilot dollars run out isn't clear. And so oftentimes they'll, they'll run back. And I think the, 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 the most we've sent a pilot back to be reviewed is three times, which is quite a bit. But, but again, if, um, if, we need, if we want to transform care, then we want everybody to start thinking um, with, along the same, in a, a line, thinking in the same way so that we can move further faster. So um, once the Delivery Systems Transformation Committee approves a pilot, then it goes to the Regional Planning Council. And the Regional Planning Council um, reports to the board. And so their job is to decide whether these fall in line with the overall goals of the IHN CCO. And in this, you also have this piece of paper in front of you. This uh, piece of paper talks about the committees, the oversight committees that support the IHN CCO and, um, or, or underlying, so health plan operations is the foundational workhorse underneath the CCO. But we have the IHN, CCO Board of Directors, the Regional Planning Council, and the Community Advisory Council. And the Delivery Systems Transformation Committee reports up to the Regional Planning Council, so they have to approve everything that we recommend as an approved pilot. So that is the pilot process for 2000 and 15, 
which is almost over, so this is going to change, but I wanted to give you all a sense of our priorities for 2015. Um, in 2015, we prioritized our, um, the funding of pilots by four, in four ways. Um, pilots that accelerated the spread of alternative payment methodologies were, were, were a priority for us. So if somebody had something with an alternative way, alternative way of paying for care, then those rose to the top for the team to look at first. Um, we, we prioritized the spread of promising practices from current pilots. That meant that if an element in a current pilot looked like it was having success, and having good outcomes related to improving people's health, then we wanted to expand those quickly to get, um, so that we could improve everybody's healthcare and everybody's healthcare experience. Mm -hmm. uh, another priority for 2015 was any proposal that would positively impact the metrics. So um, the, C uh, the IHN CTO, we have those 17 metrics which the state um, looks at our plan to see how we're meeting those metrics and part of our reimbursement comes from our ability to meet those and so we decided a priority was helping the CCO to achieve those. So any pilot proposal that touched a metric would get looked at first. And then the final priority was funding gaps and finding gaps in care and any new ideas that were really outside the box that would offer us a different way of looking at how care was provided. So those were the, the top priorities for 2015. As I mentioned, we have two more meetings left in 2015, and then in 2016, we'll spend the first two meetings developing our, our priorities for the 2016 funding process. So with that, I wanted to share a short video with everybody about one of our pilots. This is a very exciting one. I can't remember if it's on the back here. Yeah, so on the back where it listed some of the pilots, the universal prenatal screening pilot, this video is going to give a short overview of that. 